Hi guys, welcome back to this week's episode of the Corporate Dropouts. We are on episode 10 now, I think, of this season, which is crazy. And actually, as you'll see from the title of this podcast, we are focusing again on imposter syndrome. And this is something that we focused or did an episode on in our first season which was back in March 2021 like I can't actually believe we've been going for nearly two years now isn't that mad I know it's actually crazy um I just I still remember when we first started this episode uh, podcast and we released three episodes and I think one of them was imposter syndrome so um if you haven't listened to that episode it's definitely a good one we re-listened to it when we were kind of researching for this episode um definitely a lot of relevant points but today we wanted to come at it again because it was really popular the first time but maybe from like a different angle now that we're two years further down the line and yeah we've got a lot more imposter syndrome experience I can guarantee that (laughs) (laughs) I think and that's a really good point like I listened to that episode again this like today um and I was really surprised with actually how relevant all the points still were. So I think that's a real good sign of like everything we're learning on our journey still reigns true now. And actually it's kind of just we're always adding on to those learnings as opposed to things being wrong or different now. It's like actually we're just building on all those foundations and those learnings that we've learned over the years. Yeah, absolutely. And just it's so like nostalgic going back to like those times when yeah, we were like, I was barely starting my business, wasn't I? And you were kind of in a mm. much different place. Um, so yeah, no, this episode I'm really excited for because, yeah, I think it's still, imposter syndrome is just always relevant. Like it's not a thing that you're going to ever like a, be able to like not have. Um, but so that's not what we want this episode to be about. We're not telling you like how to get rid of your imposter syndrome with this episode. It's all about how to manage it and keep it at bay, but also just accept it and know that it is there and everyone experiences it. Um, So yeah. And I think I just wanted to make the point as well that it's a really good time to focus on imposter syndrome, like at the beginning of the year when everyone's kind of setting their new year's goals. And I think a lot of people will like imposter syndrome will manifest itself as people not setting as bigger goals as they want to. So for example, if you're doing your vision board, you may feel like some of your biggest dreams and desires are just so like unachievable or out of reach that you'll then kind of dismiss them. And I think that's a classic symptom of imposter syndrome. And I hope that this episode sort of opens your eyes to the feelings of like, those fears and how you need to like manage them and dismiss them to enable you to dream as big as you possibly want to like I think for this time of year when you're coming up with your goals and your visions for the next you know 12 months three years whatever it is like being able to get over your imposter syndrome demon in your head voice is really important for that exercise our last episode that we did together we we talked quite a lot about comfort zone and I think this one like links really nicely back to that one as well so I think both of these episodes are really just about kind of like putting yourself out there feeling confident about your abilities who you are what you stand for I guess everyone everyone has the biggest fear of like what other people think of them and that is like what imposter syndrome is I think when I experience imposter syndrome I'm thinking everyone thinks that I am not worthy to be here I don't know my stuff someone out there knows it better but you know that's where you really need to build on your self-confidence and one step of doing that is stepping outside or like moving outside of your comfort zone um so yeah if you haven't listened to that episode from a few weeks ago definitely worth listening along with this one I think that's a really good place to start this episode actually because we were talking about this yesterday and I think where there's like a lot more noise in the market and a lot more people doing you know there's a lot more entrepreneurs a lot more business owners a lot more small businesses like that kind of do similar things or do you know there's like crossover and I think which I think is amazing but as Ellie said it can make you feel like oh well if she's doing it maybe I shouldn't be doing it or maybe they're way better than me or they're 10 years on in their journey so I can't do it etc etc and I think that's a classic like self-sabotage move mainly because you're almost finding reasons not to do things I think there's so many 
ways that we negatively justify our like, oh, I'll do it next year or I'll do it when I'm more experienced sort of things, because we're always looking for reasons why we shouldn't do something. And again, that's classic imposter syndrome. But Ellie and I were talking about ways to overcome this. And I think which I kind of bang on a lot about in marketing is like if you really nail your niche and like the audience that you're talking to. And it's not to say that that's all your business is ever going to be. But I truly believe like as you're starting off, if you really hone in on like one key message that's going to resonate with one key audience. So, for example, we really focus in on freelancers who are starting their business and we offer them events like that's a really key like focus for us now because we know that that's we know we can really research uh, the messages that are going to resonate with them we can really get in their heads we obviously know the experience or as having been freelancers and it's not to say we won't expand out into other markets or other like verticals or other messages but right now getting super confident with that target audience is where we're going to get over that imposter syndrome and feel like we can really you know add value to them yeah, that's a brilliant point, actually, because exactly using the lifestyle CEO, the corporate dropouts as a perfect example. And Christina's like Christina said, when we started out, we were, we were trying to talk to everyone um, and we we kind of realized quite quickly that the space is very crowded. And then that got us a bit, you know, our confidence was a bit knocked because exactly we were thinking how can we compete with everyone else that's doing it and they've all got coaching qualifications and life coaching and all these things under their belt when we 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 just are just like two entrepreneurs just starting out in business but that's exactly then what our niche is like we're not we're not specifically trained and we say this from the get-go our niche is that like we are along we are just you but we're Mm -hmm. we're just your big sisters like helping you out along the way and sometimes it is you do get a bit like consumed in your own head and that's so normal and you start overthinking everything and you start comparing yourself like that's that is the problem with imposter syndrome isn't it it's just the comparison you do with yourself against everyone else and yeah yeah, that's sometimes it is about just taking that step back like me and Christina have done and thinking actually what do we like about the business what is it that we are good at in the business and how how do we want our futures to look within this business and that's how we came up with like our new strategy our new niche and even with that it's quite daunting isn't it because we're now just going to focus on the podcast we're focusing on events like Christina said oh yeah and I think that's where we really like we were really trying to do all the things to all the people because that's almost what everyone else was doing so we obviously this creator economy is such a term that's banded around now and everyone's like talking about creating passive income through online courses memberships and we were like oh well that's what we need to do then but it like really wasn't resonating with us and we've got the toolkit which I'm really proud of and I think it is really valuable but we were like we don't want to be doing this like over and over and over and over again and it just didn't really resonate with us and and I think we dug really deep in terms of like what we were missing as business owners and as freelancers and we felt like there was a real like we've sort of lost this um in-person events and like meeting like-minded people and just being able to find a community of people where we can just you know learn something maybe but also just meet people and like generally share ideas and learnings and stuff a bit like this podcast but in real life basically and that's where we kind of thought right even though it sounds a bit scary to just focus on one channel or one way of making money eventually like it's actually a good focus for us and we don't feel like we're being spread too thin now Exactly. That is like the key word. We were being very spread thin. Yeah. And (laughs) not really achieving anything because of it. (laughs) No. And that is because we were literally like, oh, well, everyone else is doing that. So is that what we like? That's what maybe we should be doing. But yeah, like at the end of the day, it comes down to what you're passionate about because that passion will keep you driven. And obviously everyone knows um, if you have a business or you're starting your own business, like it is hard work and if you don't have that kind of passion driving driving you Mm. every day getting you out of bed getting you sitting at your desk even though like you don't even know how where to begin there's so much to do like as long as you have that passion you have your final destination in your head that's what will drive you there so I guess that's another like key factor to like feeling probably more 
aligned with yourself and like that obviously helps with imposter syndrome is knowing like this is my passion this is what I know I'm good at this is what is I'm really excited about I think I can make a difference here um so yeah like your niche and and a passion behind that niche is just really important for confidence building and yeah just eradicating imposter syndrome as best or keeping it down to a minimum just to build on that, um, just as like a final point, I think where obviously a lot of this imposter syndrome, I think, shows itself up when you're trying to market your business. So like if you're promoting yourself on Instagram or if you're building a personal brand to support support the marketing of your business, like you can often second guess like, oh, will this content resonate or is this the message I should be going out with? And really like it can stop you showing up at all because you're so scared of people like thinking oh what the hell is she doing or like this is like it doesn't resonate with your target audience or whatever and I think like the key thing we've learned is that just being your true authentic self especially when it comes to marketing your personal brand is like just the one way that people are gonna really resonate with your con your content if you try and almost like be like someone else or copy other people's content or say you know tell stories that don't really resonate with what you're doing in your life at that stage then I think that's where people aren't going to resonate with your content and you'll feel more like an imposter than ever because you are actually being an imposter basically or an impersonator anyway yeah I think that's such a it is that's the toughest part isn't it is like you're not really worried about what like the strangers on the internet think to be honest like you're so well I suppose there's two things like sometimes you get worried about what your friends or your friends or friends are gonna think that are following you or like know of you and stuff like sometimes because you you know their face you can put a face to the name that's where it's quite intimidating um that's definitely something that you can you just need to remember that they they don't no one cares about what you're doing as much as you do they're not thinking about you all day every day while you're posting about your yourself and your business and your personal brand what is your aim your aim is not to get liked by them it's to have a successful business then there is obviously the other side of it where you are like pitching in front of a group of people that have like bought onto your course or you know have signed up for a free webinar or whatever well they have from what the content you've already posted you have to remember that Mm. they have signed up because of that so they are interested they are already interested and there's nothing stopping them if they're on the webinar or you know there's nothing like they'll find some some value in it and you that's where you just have to work on your confidence back to that again working on your confidence and and just know that you believe in yourself because if you believe in yourself everyone else will believe in you too if you go up there thinking like I'm not I'm not ready I don't know my staff then you know that will come across I think that's a really good way to bridge into like the next point of how to kind of get over imposter syndrome which is like obviously building your confidence and actually like like um getting more self-assured is where like the next kind of tip of how to almost yeah get over imposter syndrome in the moment where you might be feeling a bit like you're lacking in confidence yeah so these are kind of Christina and I sat down we we went through like what makes us feel more confident because at the end of the day imposter syndrome is just a lack of self-confidence as we keep saying so the first thing to even just like help with imposter syndrome is to feel a bit more confident so yeah Christina and I have sat down we've we've thought about the things that we do or to make ourselves feel a bit better about ourselves just tiny little things obviously like we said at the beginning this podcast isn't about curing imposter syndrome there's there's nothing really that (laughs) you can do to like everyone suffers from it that's that's first that's first and foremost our point is that everyone suffers from it you're not alone everyone has this that should instantly make you feel better anyway yeah and I think actually to make that be even better for you is I think when you're showing up when imposter syndrome shows up it genuinely means that you're moving out of your comfort zone which is only a good thing like I think it means you're leveling up and you're putting yourself in situations that you haven't done before and that's like all of that is a really good thing and actually if you can push yourself through that fear and that imposter syndrome then you're automatically leveling up in your life so I think shaping it even like that in your brain can really help you be like okay no like I'm gonna face this and I'm gonna move up a level and you know imposter syndrome be damned yeah so cool so one of the things that I do 
in my kind of like I make sure every day I am getting dressed getting ready getting showered um you know making my bed so when I sit down for work or if I'm sitting down with a client or in front of you know to do a a talk or anything I know that I've started my day as my best self in my best routine I've Mm. got my my home in order as much as I can I'm looking good I'm feeling good you know that's just like a number one obvious way to start the day feeling your best self because you don't want to get on like get on the call or get to a meeting or something and you know you haven't brushed your hair and oh you forgot to put one eyebrow on or something so (laughs) just make sure like that is first and foremost probably the most obvious one just if you know you've got something up that coming up that you're not feeling as confident in just start the day like you're a boss bitch and get yourself feeling amazing and I think to add to that so one thing I've started implementing in my like getting ready routine is um I actually recorded my own affirmations on my phone that really resonate with me and the journey I'm on at the moment but that you can also obviously get like other affirmations just on like insight timer or even subliminals so you just subconsciously hear them rather than actually hear the words and I found that that is such a good way to start the day because if you're just hearing like I am good enough I am confident I am easily able to achieve all my goals I am I've got enough energy, whatever your like issues are. I am a good mom. I am a good daughter, whatever, you know, having all of those, just hearing them in your head, just to go into your subconscious for the day. Like I find that's such a good part of my routine now. So like, as I'm doing my makeup or as I'm brushing my teeth, like it's just playing in the background. And I think just that I was reading the science behind it, but like, I think it takes maybe three weeks to rewire your brain and like most of us naturally are 90% negative. Like our thoughts are 90% negative all the time. So actually you have to really, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? And actually just by trying deliberately to reframe the thoughts you have, like after about three weeks, it will become um, natural. So you'll actually, you know, naturally have more positive thoughts rather than negative. And I think that's something that is really important for business owners and entrepreneurs to do, especially because there's no one really there like backing you. Like you really have to find it from within, especially when you're just starting out. So you need to be your own biggest supporter. And if 90% of your thoughts every day, even if you're not quite conscious of them are negative, that's just naturally going to have an effect on you. So you could either do it when you're going to sleep. So it goes into your subconscious overnight, or like, as I said, when you're getting ready and it will just over time, it will really help rewire those thoughts that you have about yourself and just naturally you'll feel more confident. Yeah. And I think that is a brilliant point and leads really nicely onto my next point, which is kind of similar, but it's about gratitude. So obviously like with affirmations, you're basically kind of being grateful for yourself and you're 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 telling yourself like how much you love yourself and believe in yourself etc so and as Christina says that's sparking like positive emotions within you and and um yeah I think I bet if everyone went away like today and just listened to what they think in their head there would be a lot of negativity and a lot of like self-criticism once you start recognizing it it's actually crazy how much you think negatively about yourself like even if you just catch yourself in the mirror guaranteed you will pick out the flaws rather than the good things like everyone will do that and it's like what the fuck like how why are we ingrained to do that like why can't we be like oh my god yes like I'm so proud of the muscles developing in my arms or I'm so proud that I'm losing I don't know it doesn't even have to be about weight but do you know what I mean it doesn't or like (laughs) it can be about your brain I'm so happy that I showed up as my best self and really proved that client like won that client whatever you know we always reflect negatively and actually that's a good point talking about gratitude I think we've touched on this before but like in our journals we always journal negative stuff I think rather than positive like I will only feel like I need to go and journal if I'm in a bad space which means that my journal is 90% like bitching about how I can't deal with a situation or how I need to you know change myself to to be better at dealing with a situation and I I don't Mm. tend to go to my journal to be like I had a really good day today or I really nailed this meeting or whatever and I feel like on top of the gratitude list we should journal the really positive stuff that happens as well and like what we learned from them and you know how did we manage to show up in such a positive way what was so good about that day that meant it was perfect or whatever you know yeah I think 
that's what Christina and I both realised that we were doing that in our journals. We were kind of either being moany or or like the victim kind of culture and, you know, oh, well, this happened to me, but I, I, you know, I did my blah, blah, blah. No, like you need to be journaling like all the positive things that happened that day. Of course, like sometimes it's good to journal and get out those negative emotions that maybe you're feeling totally overwhelmed by but you have to kind of do it now in like a more positive way like I felt overwhelmed but I was able to deal with my emotions and Mm. now I know like next time it's not as big a deal and blah 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 or whatever you want to write but but and also and we've sort of gone off topic a bit but I feel like this is a really important point but like I was reading back through my 2022 journal last week or whenever um and I was like, I really wish I had more positive learnings in here that I can take into 2022. Like, I know I've gone up a level in terms of how I live my life and how I deal with things or whatever. But I would love to read the pages within which I learned that lesson. And like, what can I take forward that was so positive about those lessons I learned? All I've got is all the things I shouldn't take forward and the things I've unlearned, which is fab. But actually, if I'd kept a note of like today I did I implemented all of this and it meant I had a wicked meeting and this is how I dealt with it etc then there'd be so many more lessons for me to take into the next year right and I think that would be a really good thing for us all to implement yes absolutely that that's another great point is like whenever you get your small wins write them down and maybe yeah pop them like at the back of your journal or something so they're easy to go back and look at yeah. instead of you know, having to reread your whole journal or something like that but every time you have those small wins like even if it's like oh, I had a really good meeting that presentation went really well oh my boss gave me a compliment or you know whatever it is it could be like oh mm. someone on the street smiled at me or whatever those small things that make you feel like a tiny bit more confident write them down somewhere really easily accessible because then yeah mate don't you know don't need to look at them every day but when you're feeling like you need that little confidence like boost, yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's a good idea you're reflecting then just go back and, and have a look but yeah I think that's why gratitude is so important because I said if you listen to the podcast I did last week about my top five books um the book that I'm reading, one of the books that I'm reading is called The Magic, which is all about gratitude. And that is, that has really kind of helped me so much with, yeah, like we were just talking about thinking positively and thinking more optimistic, because obviously like imposter syndrome is you're sitting there criticizing yourself all the time, like thinking that you're not, you're not good enough. So that's, it's all about changing your your kind of like way of thinking, the angle you're coming in at when you're thinking in your head, like it's about recognizing it stopping it and spinning it and making it positive so yeah gratitude is a really really easy step to start implementing into your daily routine that will change that mindset from a negative place to a positive place and then I guess like another one that we were talking about is I know we always talk about the gym but the gym has really helped both of us because of that kind of like when you exercise obviously your endorphins are released um you get dopamine hit um and these are again all things that make positive feelings in your in your body and especially if you're feeling maybe like I mean like Christina and I definitely aren't out of shape um or anything but just going to the gym makes us feel like more whole not more whole but like more kind of like badasses more than if we didn't go to the gym um just like you know like another thing we put on our tick off our list another achievement again it's a small win and those things again build confidence yeah I think it might it might be that like to us the gym and you know we've got goals around our exercising and our weight and stuff so when we work towards them which is such an easy thing to implement into our daily life And it's such a part of our structure that like we feel really good for doing that. But it doesn't I mean, obviously, I would always encourage exercise, but like it doesn't have to be the gym necessarily. Like if you um, if you feel that your goal is to get really good at sewing, don't know where that came from, but something like that. And you work on that every day, like that could be what gives you a bit of a like boost that you're working towards your goals. And I think having goals that are very personal, not just business goals, allow you to have that because it's like if you don't feel like you always want to work towards business goals every single day, then have something more personal. Like I want to swim for I want to be able to swim 50 lengths by the end of the year or I want to have painted this amazing picture for my dad. I don't know, you know, like working on (laughs) things like that that are also enjoyable 
but it gives you that like hit of yes I've achieved something as well I think is a really good thing to implement into everyday life like not just focusing on business goals all the time because lord knows we can't do that no that's a really good point actually because I've just started like a couple of months before the end of the year last year I started like making myself read every time I got into bed like read before a few pages before bed and oh my god I love reading now and I love getting into bed I used to go to bed at like 11 and obviously just like probably flick through my phone and then fall asleep but yes, now I get into bed at, worse. yeah now I get into bed at like half, when it hits nine o'clock I'm like oh better get ready because it's reading time and I literally look forward to yeah. it and I get into bed and and so like what's t- from gone from like a goal has actually turned into like a hobby and like an, a personal yeah. interest and now I just feel like oh my god I'm one of those people that reads now like I'm really cool <laughs> um but you know like obviously that's just that. all in my all in my head but that's kind of again makes me feel a bit more like a more rounded person and more like yeah, and put together a bit more put together even if that it doesn't mean that like if within me that's what I feel and so yeah this help- is a really good point actually because that that leads me on to um I think the best way to get over an imposter get over imposter syndrome is by like living as the best version of yourself or the higher version of yourself and Ellie's higher version was someone who went to bed and read every night right so you're embodying that by doing that action and now you've become that next best version of yourself and I think it's like sometimes I feel like if I'm really scared I'm like well five years in the future Christina wouldn't give a shit about this and I like embody her and I think well Christina in the future is a badass like the best version of myself is a badass so actually I'm just gonna embody her and it can almost feel like you're getting into a character so it's not really you but it is you but a better version and you're like transporting yourself into that next stage of yourself and it's like a it's like putting a mask on almost I guess but you're embodying the best version of yourself that you know you want to become and I think this is where one of our other tips was like having your vision board or at least like a motivational quote as your screen savers is a really good way of like manifesting that so I'm I'm more in favor of like doing your vision board and then putting it away so you're not constantly trying to like do things and like manifest and get a bit overwhelmed by it all so I don't want it as my screensaver I tried it and it didn't really work for me but uh, I've got the images in my head of like right I want to feel like really powerful now and I have a picture specific picture of like one of my vision board pictures that would like transport me to being that person but then on the back of my screensaver and my phone and my laptop, I have just like a really motivating quote that every time I open my laptop, I'm like, oh, yeah, OK, yeah, I'm a boss bitch. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it kind of gets you into character almost. So I think that's another good way of just being like, I can do this, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. So, yeah, just make sure that you're clear on the person that you want to be. You don't need to remind yourself every day, but as long as you've got that kind of like long term goal that's kind of sitting in the back of your head um, and you're giving yourself those daily confidence boosts, confidence boosts, boosts, confidence boosts, then you will like you will subconsciously and consciously get there. The only other point I wanted to make actually is like surrounding yourself with inspirational people as well. So we were saying like when we go to co-working spaces or like, you know, even like offices, when I used to work in like an office, like being around other people that are like working and doing their best and that motivates you, doesn't it? Like now a lot of us are working Mm -hmm. from home and quite isolated. We've only got ourselves to kind of bounce off like get yourself out to a co-working space, meet people, like build your confidence that way, talk to strangers, um, surround yourself with really inspirational people. And again, that will make you level up. When you level up, your confidence boosts as well. Yeah, so I love this point because actually, so I've been with, like I've had conversations with two of my like uh, friends who are in similar spaces, similar like levels of business to me over the last couple of days. And even just having those conversations has been like so nice because we talked a lot about imposter syndrome, like it naturally came up in conversation and we all are facing like similar issues and just having that as like a soundboard and a way of chatting through and just like, you know, realizing you're not so alone, basically, because I think a lot of us, especially if you're a freelancer or just setting up, we are, as I said earlier, we're kind of on our own in this for a while. And and it's nice to just have those people around you that, you know, are on similar and that's I guess what we're trying to do with this podcast is be that voice for you where you can come and listen and be like oh okay they feel it too thank god 
um but also just having other friends who are on a similar journey to you and really seeking them out like this is why we want to do events because I think it's really difficult in this day and age (laughs) I sound like an old woman in this day and age to um to find the actual physical connections and like I've worked very hard like deliberately to find people and like even that like meeting someone who you don't know and like suggest if you meet them online and suggest to meet for coffee like that's quite terrifying just as they're like oh, okay we're gonna go sit and have a coffee like oh scary but I think like you know maybe plan an activity that you both like to do so it makes it a bit more interesting or whatever but I think making that part of your process as a business owner is really important to like seek those people out because your friends won't necessarily like your friends from school aren't necessarily going to become business owners right so you'll probably find that your old friends maybe don't quite get the new journey you're on so you need to find other people to like talk about that stuff with yeah and that's perfectly fine like you have friends for different things um don't get rid of your old friends (laughs) no (laughs) but but no I love that I really do think that is probably like the number key point for um feeling kind of a better better about yourself more confident and simmering and 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 getting rid of as much as you can imposter syndrome is like leveling up and pushing yourself outside the comfort outside your comfort zone so like as we said at the beginning of this podcast if you haven't listened to our previous episode about comfort zone go and have a listen as well because I think these two really work nicely together but yeah, just to give you yeah. a quick summary then, our key points I would say are get getting up and getting dressed every day, um, doing doing your habits every day, like taking off all your habits, um, doing setting yourself mini goals and achieving them, um, like my mores with reading. Embodying your like next best, your best version of yourself and like what you see that as. So yeah, it kind of relates to like, you know, setting mini goals and reading and like getting dressed every day, et cetera, but like really embodying that next version of yourself. Yeah. And then like obviously gratitude, journaling in a positive way, getting rid of that victim culture that, you know, it's so easily, you know, you easily do. Um, and then honing, making sure- honing, honing in on your niche and really getting clear on like one offering and one audience you're speaking to. So you get really confident in that space first. Yeah, and then just just try and don't be scared of failing. Um, you can only fail when you actually give up. So just, yeah, just put yourself out there. Try, move move out of your comfort zone, level up. And then, yeah, that's, our, that's basically our top tips that we have found really work. Yeah. So we hope we found that episode useful, guys. Um, as always, if you have any comments, um, please leave them underneath. Remember, you can watch us on YouTube and listen to us on Spotify and Apple. Um, and yeah, like, please just keep, keep listening listening and send us your feedback because we absolutely love it and we love making the podcast love it thank you so much guys see you next week